skill guide thinking that you already have a full six skill crew okay if you don't have a full six skill crew on your tank and on this one i'm gonna start with bia first if you don't have a full six skill crew i would not recommend putting bia at the start okay leave it for later as the fifth or the sixth skill you know because like these other ones will be more important but if you have like a full six skill crew we'll start with the classics brothers in arms of course when we put on all our tanks we'll get that bonus repairs you know must have Recon for the V range, because if you get like more V range, we're going to be able to like uh, ditch other crew, like for example, optics on some tanks, in case we don't have the V range we need. And now let's go over the new crew skills. So, emergency, when fully trained, increases the crew efficiency bonus by 15% after receiving damage. This is a heavy tank, and 90% of the time, you're definitely going to be taking damage. So, very useful crew skill. Situational, but useful, okay? We don't care about camo, mentor, I don't care about it. Maybe if you want to train your crew from scratch, okay, maybe you can put mentor, but I prefer having my crew basically working as good as they can, you know? So I don't really care about mentor. Practicality decreases consumable cooldown by 10%. I don't care about this one, I don't think it's very useful, you know? It's only 10% and they changed the the consumables dispatch and you repair everything with small crew with small kits anyway so not useful sound attention when fully trained alert well you know what it is it tells you when art is about to shoot you and the bonus part they added dispatches it decreases the negative effects of stun this shouldn't be a screw skill you prioritize you know it's not that useful so we're gonna go to this one First, coordination. When fully trained, increases aiming speed by 12.5% after you spot a vehicle. This is useful. And remember, every time you spot a vehicle, this will activate. It doesn't matter if you spot somebody at the start, you know? Let's say you spot somebody, they go into cover, and then you spot them again. The crew skill will keep activating. It's not just something that activates once you know when you spotted one tank only once no it's gonna keep activating every time you keep spotting somebody that you know that wasn't spotted so very useful okay and since we don't care about these ones we're gonna go with sound detection as the last we're probably gonna get shot by Artie a lot right so it will be useful i mostly take it for the negative effects of stunning because if you play this game with sound, you're gonna hear like when Artie shoots, like all the sound gets muffled like suddenly. So you know when Artie shell is coming. So you can use that to to like fall back, you know, make some maneuvers, to re retreat. If your I don't know your ears aren't that good, I guess you can put this, you know, or like if you use the sound, like I said, like when everything gets muffled, you can skip the skill and put maybe something else that's good for your tank. Yeah. Okay, let's go to, what is this, the gunner skills. We're going to continue again with Brothers in Arms and Repairs. Snapshot Classic, you know, gun dispersion during true rotation, very useful. Uh, the new crew skills, right? Armor, when fully trained, reduces the range of the potential damage and penetration and gun dispersion. I think this is going to be very useful. It's nice to have gun dispersion. And what it says reduces their potential uh, damage penetration. Basically, you go from 25 plus, you go from plus minus 25% uh, RNG and penetration Welcome and damage to 20%. To so, ease. basically, a no brainer, right? I want to have this. Thank you, White Mold. Uh, next one quick aiming. When fully trained, increases aiming speed and true traverse by 2.5. This is useful, maybe not on this tank, though. We don't really care about it right now. Concentration decreases the gun dispersion of a stationary vehicle. So basically your accuracy will be better with by 3.5%. We're gonna take this. I'm not sure how many instances you're gonna have when you're gonna be fully stationary with the IS-7, but it is useful, right? So what do we have? We don't care about camo designated target. This is for scouts, you don't care. This one uh it's not gonna be super useful. Dead eye. Well, since we're speaking about Deadeye, I think it's still useless. In my opinion, Deadeye was always useless because it just increases uh, the chance for you to do critical damage 
only by a small amount, right? It's a very small amount. And module damage in this game is like RNG. So I would definitely not recommend taking Deadeye on any tank. Doesn't matter. You might think it might be useful to take Deadeye on the new light tanks because they have the pew pew machine guns or whatever. I wouldn't take it, you know? I would not bother. Useless crew skill. So out of all these ones, I guess we're going to go with quick aiming because we don't have anything else useful for this tank, right? Yeah. <clears throat> And yeah, I didn't mention your tank needs to be like uh, stationary for three seconds for this to activate. So basically, it activates in the same way as Binox and Camonet activates, right? Yeah, so <clears throat> there we go. So remember, Dead Eye not really useful. We took these crew skills. Let's move along. Driver crew skills. Okay, let's take Bia. Repairs again. Smooth ride. Always want the extra gun dispersion. And remember, the smooth ride perk and uh, snapshot, well, mostly snapshot, is not going to be very useful on tanks that don't have a turret, right? Smooth ride is always useful because, like, you're moving, but the uh, snapshot is not so useful on tanks that, are, that don't have a turret. Okay, so we got these three main skills, these three main skills. Let's see what's next. Engineer, fully trained, increases the top speed and reverse speed by one kilometer. Reduces the penalty to a damaged engine by 20%. Not super useful, right? Like I'm mostly looking here at the one kilometer increase. Not super useful. The damaged engine part, we don't care because consumables are reusable. It the kits like heal everything, repair everything, so yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Smooth ride is always active when you're moving your tank. Okay, when you're moving your tank, it's always active. Okay. So Engineer not so useful, off-road driving, this is basically gonna take away some of the penalty driving on bad terrain. Could be useful, it will be useful. Clutch braking, we don't really care, this tank has pretty good traverse speed. Reliable placement, increases HE damage absorption, decreases damage received. We don't really care about this one either. Maybe this one will save for like tanks that have no armor, so... Out of all of this... I'm probably gonna go with controlled impact. I7 is quite a fast tank, right? It's a very fast tank and has very good frontal armor. So it's gonna increase the damage, the ram damage to enemy vehicles by 20% and reduce the damage by 50 by 25% to yours, right? In your suspension. So basically this is gonna make like if somebody rams you into your tracks, you're probably gonna take less damage. You're going to take less damage if they ram you on the track, you know, because first they got to break the tracks and then they got to do damage to you. So this is a very strong skill right now. Or It's situational, but if you want to ram with your tank, this is a very strong uh, skill right now, especially if you put the equipment to like boost it too, right? So we're going to go with control impact. We're going to take off-road driving too, so we have like less uh, negative effects on bad terrain. And we're going to go with engineer too. One kilometer, but like these other two aren't gonna be that useful. You could, if you want, not take engineer and take reliable placement in case people shoot high explosive at you. But how often does that happen, you know? At least the one kilometer an hour you're always gonna be using, so yeah. The, these last two are kind of, it's up to you, but I would go for engineer because it's probably more useful most of the time. Okay, next, loader. Remember on the loader skills, if your tank has two loaders, in order for uh, the crew skills to work, like let's say Adrenaline Rush, Close Come, and all these, you need to put them on both uh, loaders, okay? If you want them to be at 100%. If you only put them on one of them, it's going to be at 50%. Okay, so remember, if your tank has two loaders, you need to duplicate the crew skills for maximum effectiveness. So. Brothers in Arms, uh, Repairs, 
That's a good point. Ardy shoots HP. That's a good point. You can take that to like protect you from Ardy with IS7. That's a good point. Like I said, it's situational. It's up to you. Uh, repairs. Uh, Adrenaline Rush is a super strong skill this patch. I would definitely recommend taking Adrenaline Rush all the time. Because in probably most of your games, you're going to go under 25% hit points, right? Before it used to be like 5% or 10%, it wasn't that useful, but now it's a super strong skill, right? So in almost all your games, you're going to go under 25%. Definitely recommend having it. Uh, okay. Because we have these other new crew skills, you know, perfect charge, shell velocity. This one decreases gun loading time when you're at less than 50 meters. And like ammo tuning, I think the value of safe stowage and intuition kind of decreased, at least for me. Like I stopped putting intuition on tanks and safe stowage. Because I want to focus more on the offensive capabilities, right? <clears throat> so th I'm definitely going to put close combat. Again, it's a heavy tank, it's an armor tank. A lot of the times you're going to be fighting up close. An extra 2.5%. Loading time, you know, very good, must have, especially on super armored tanks. Ammo tuning increases minimum potential damage and potential penetration. What this basically means is you're always going to be rolling 2% higher on your penetration and damage you do, right? And the minimum ones. It's not super useful, but you know. It is a crew that, like, reduces RNG slightly. You know, it's up to you if you want to use it. Yeah. Perfect charge, increases shell velocity. This is going to be good, I guess, for TDs, I would say, in general. As a heavy tank, we don't really care about this. So, we got four crew skills. Uh, I personally shoot only APCR and IS-7, so I'm not going to bother with intuition anymore. I will take safe stowage because it's a Russian tank and they definitely tend to get ammo rocked a lot, right? And I'm gonna go with the ammo tuning, slightly less RNG, or should I say like, you're always gonna have slightly higher damage, you know? Yeah. Potential higher damage. Decreases the RNG a little bit. That's what I find useful here. Yeah. Let's train it. Okay. Loader skills, we're just gonna duplicate everything we got on the other ones, basically, no? So they work at 100%, right? And this one, like, also gets bonus perks, the radio skills. This should be, like, pretty simple for heavy. More V-range, situational awareness. Side by side, increases the crew efficiency at distance of less than 50 meters from an allied vehicle, right? So it's a heavy tank, it needs to be at less than 50 meters from another heavy tank, we're going to pick it because that's going to happen a lot of the times, right? Uh, this is basically a kind of a light tank, medium tank crew skill. Same with these. We don't really care about these. Probably going to go with firefighting on the IS-7. Again, it's a Russian tank. They tend to get ammo racked. They tend to burn. So we're going to go with firefighting because it's a super useful skill, right, to have. Especially if you don't run your tank with fire extinguisher, like I don't. I just run Russian, so. Okay, that was a guide of how you can spec your tank. For an assault heavy tank, let's pick something like a support heavy right now. Let's pick a 50B, right? Just so we're, we go into the, into the support side too, right? Okay, 50B. I have all the crew still spec'd, that's good. I have them all unlocked, I meant. Again, if you don't have all the six crew skills on your tank, I would not recommend starting with Brothers in Arms. If you only have like three, four crew skills, leave Brothers in Arms as the fifth or the sixth skill, you know, because all your crew members need to have it in order for it to be active. So that reduces the efficiency of it. But I got a full crew skill. I got, I got the full six skills, so it doesn't matter to me. So we're going to put Bia, we're going to put Repairs. Don't care about camo, even though this is a support sniper tank. It doesn't have camo, we don't care. We're gonna put the recon, right? Extra V range is always good to have. <clears throat> so, uh, 
are gonna pick the same crew efficiency after taking damage. Whenever you're gonna be clipping a tank, most likely Welcome you're gonna take damage, to the so. Knees. Yeah. <clears throat> I forgot to mention, fuck the Lonny Gooses get banned easy. Thank you, Outlaw. Take it easy so I can do this guide. Thank you. Okay. Uh, crew efficiency when you when I taking damage, you're gonna be taking damage with this tank all the time anyway, so even if you're a support. Especially when you're clipping, is very useful. Aiming speed after you spot a vehicle, again, very useful, especially on this one since you're an auto loader, right? And like after you shoot, your gun will disperse a lot, so very useful for that. Coordination. And last one, we're gonna go with like uh, the sound detection too, against RD, you know? Not very different from a normal heavy tank right now. Okay, now gunner crew skills. Bia repairs the good old snapshot. You might think again that that might be useful. I do not recommend it. I think it's like useless skill, especially compared to how good like some of the new crew skills are. I would not recommend Dead Eye. And another fact that makes Dead Eye so useless in dispatch is again the fact that kits repair everything now. Small kits, big kits. Well, it used to be only big kits, but now small kits repair everything. Med kits repair because they repair everything. So that makes Dead Eye extra useless in this patch, right? Like, who cares if you do module damage to your enemy? That shouldn't really be a priority, right? Unless you're doing missions or something. But even then, we, we learned over the years that crew, that module damage is just RNG. So it doesn't really matter. So... Uh, we're gonna go with armor for this one too, gun dispersion, and like reduces the, the RNG, very useful. Decreases the gun dispersion of a stationary tank, this is also gonna be very useful on the 50B, right? Because with this tank, you tend to miss a lot of the shots, especially after firing, because the gun blooms a lot, so it's gonna be very useful. And we're gonna go with quick aiming. It's a small boost, but these other crew skills don't really interest us. So we're going to go with quick aiming. Another quick, small boost, you know, to the aiming side. Nice. Bonus perks. <clears throat> Lonnie, you suck. Thank you, Outlaw. Okay. Disregard the Pepega who like keeps trying to sabotage our guide. Uh, okay. We got the bonus uh, skills. Adrenaline Rush, again, must-have. I would recommend that on any tank. It's a must-have. Uh, I think Perfect Charge could be useful skill on 50B, right? A lot of the times I complained that this uh, tank misses a lot because the shells are not fast enough. So this could be a good, uh, a good idea to increase the velocity. I'm going to disregard Safe Storage. Intuition could be useful because, you know, it does have like quite a bit of reload time. So I'm basically gonna ditch this skill. I think the gains will be like too low compared to the other crew skills. I will take Intuition because it's an odd loader. If I was, if I was running full gold ammo on this tank, I wouldn't take it. I'm not sure if I do. I think I actually run full gold ammo on it. Okay, in that case, we're not going to take it. But if you run standard ammo and gold ammo, you should take this because the reload time is quite high. So it will be useful. We're going to disregard it then. Uh, we're going to take close, uh, close combat. I said a support tank. That doesn't mean you're just going to be sniping all the time. It's not the case. You're going to have to like get in close and dirty to like clip a tank. And after that, like maybe you want to clip them again. So. This will be useful, situational, but useful, and I'm going to take uh, perfect charge. <laughs> like, right, this is going to be for sniping, this is going to be for brawling, so they're both going to be useful in their own ways, okay? All right, gunner crew skills now. Uh, gunner, I think this is the driver. BR repairs, smooth ride, of course. Uh, some of you might not know, but the 50B is a excellent rammer tank, and that's because the front plate of the 50B is very angled, so you can ram tanks quite well with it, right? 
the front plate of the 50B is quite armored. So most likely we're gonna want to control the impact because doing a super high damage ram on a tank, let's say you're like gonna YOLO a tank that is full HP. You YOLO him, maybe he's not so armored, right? I mean, let's say you YOLO a medium tank. You know you can't kill him with the clip damage alone. You YOLO him, you do a super high damage ram and then you go ahead and like finish him off with the, with the clip. This could be very useful for the 50B. It's gonna be situational, but it's gonna be very useful whenever you wanna kill a tank. You know? Welcome. To that the is full HP. Piece. Thank you, Ursi. And because like the rest of these aren't gonna be, I mean, some of them will be useful, but the rest, not so much, so. Okay, now, increases uh, reliable plasma HE shell damage. The 50B is not a super armored tank. A lot of the times you will get fanned by high explosive. And like somebody mentioned, this is also good for uh, RD damage, right? So we're definitely gonna take this for, uh, for 50B. You could again take this for a super armor tank if you think we're gonna get rd a lot. We're gonna take it because it will be useful. And the last one, uh, I'm just gonna go with off road driving. Again, less penalty when going over bad terrain. Okay, radio operator. BM repairs, situational awareness, more V range, obviously. Uh, we're gonna take the side by side, because most likely you're gonna be next to other tanks most of the time. We will take firefighting because we don't have a uh, fire extinguisher on this tank. And, well, this is not gonna be useful. You're not really gonna spot camo, not gonna matter. It has no camo. So the last one basically depends on you. Do you want to know when you've been spotted 0.75 seconds faster? Or do you want to be spotted like one second less? I think I'm going to go with like being spotted one second less. That's going to be more useful in my opinion. Right, especially when artists want to shoot and stuff like that. I'm going to go with like being spotted one second less. Yeah. Alrighty. That was a 50B. I approve what Outlaw said. Thank you, Deponit. Now, let's pick... We're done with heavy tanks. Let's pick uh, two mediums. Let's start with the Leopard, first of all, because Leopard is a sniper. <clears throat> and after that, I'm going to do an E50M, because you, with that one, you can also get in up close and dirty, right? Up close and personal with that tank. So, going on to medium tanks. Okay, I, I'll repeat every time, if you don't have the full six skill crew on the tank, don't start with Bia, leave it for last, okay? But I do, so I'm gonna put Bia, Repairs, Recon, these, thing, these three will like always go first thing on, on any tank, most likely. The Leopard, though, is a medium, it has very good camo, so we're also gonna put camouflage on this bad boy. Not necessarily like priority but we're gonna put camel okay what's next emergency we will be taking damage at some point so crew efficiency increase and the last one we're gonna go with aiming speed not really i mean this is kind of like debatable leopard doesn't really need any more aiming speed like it already aims godly right mentor we don't care this is not useful enough Maybe I'll go with sound detection instead. Like, if he was a tank that doesn't have that good gun, I would probably take coordination. But, like, in the Leopard's case, it already aims instantly, right? So, a little bit more extra aim speed is not really gonna matter. I'm gonna go with sound detection because in this tank's case, it'll be more useful, right? But if you are in a... I don't know. What's a medium tank with bad gun handling? Let's say if you're in a 430U, okay, that doesn't have the best gun handling, I would definitely pick coordination instead of this, so. Okay. Let's put the bonus perks. Situation awareness, of course, always get the V-range, because, like, you can ditch not having optics. Always get the V-range. Uh, crew efficiency at distance is less than 50 meters from allied type. 
we can take this. It's kind of going to be situational. But I think I will take it because a lot of the times you'll be close to other mediums. Like a lot of these new crew skills will be situational, right? So we just got to try to pick what's best for our tanks, right? And last one, uh, we don't care about this. We're not going to spot. We're not going to focus on spotting with the leopard. Don't care about this either. Do I want to be spotted one second less? Or do I want to reduce my chances of uh, burning too much? This doesn't reduce the chances of burning. This just reduces the fire damage you take, just so we're clear. I'm going to go with firefighting because this tank is unarmored, right? <clears throat> and especially now with the addition of the new light tanks with the machine guns. If somebody drives behind you and like keeps shooting your <laughs> engine constantly, you might burn, right? Or just any high explosive. I'm going to go with firefighting because I think it will be more useful than the extra one second. But you could also take jamming. You know, and be spotted one second less. Yeah. Okay, let's go on with a gunner. Be a repair snapshot. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Camo, armor, quick aiming. <clears throat> We're gonna take camo again because we have some crew skills here that increase the that improve the gun handling, but they're not gonna be super useful. So this again. Aiming speed, true to rest speed, leopard doesn't need it, right? Doesn't need dead on, we don't care. Doesn't need time, we don't care. So, gun dispersion, that's nice, you know, because leopard doesn't have the best dispersion on the move. We can take this. We're going to take this one, right? This basically improves the accuracy uh, on uh, the gun dispersion, basically, right? And reduces the RNG a bit, so we're going to take that. And we're also going to take concentration because a lot of the times you're going to be sniping with this tank. Remember, you need to be stationary for three seconds. Just like, I don't know, when you have Binox or Camonet. We don't care about the quick aiming because the tank aims super fast. And it also has super good traverse speed, right? So out of all these, we're going with these crew skills. <clears throat> okay, next, driver. Bia repairs. I'm gonna take smooth right first. And again, I want to improve the dispersion on the move. Leopard gets up to really fast speeds. So when you do that, the gun tends to bloom. So it's good to reduce the dispersion on the move. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> what do we go with next? Camo. We're going to go with camo so we can keep stacking the camo on our tank. The leopard does have very good camo, so we will take reliable placement because, you know, <laughs> Tempest and Lech HE damage is useful on this tank. It has no armor, so people will shoot HE at you a lot. And last one. Leopard is all, also a very fast tank, right? I don't really care too much about the extra one kilometer top speed. I'm already running turbo on this tank, so I don't think the engineer will be very useful. Again, I'm only I'm only looking at this crew skill for the one kilometer speed. Like the penalty of damage engine really doesn't matter because you repair everything super fast. So we're gonna go with off-road driving in this case, right? To have like less penalty when driving over bad terrain will help you relocate, you know, faster. Alrighty. Loader. Bia repairs. <clears throat> I'm gonna hold on to the camo for now. Right, let's see how much we get with the camo. If we put it four extra camo stationary and three moving. I'm gonna hold up with that right now. Because on the loader we have a lot of useful skills. Adrenaline rush must have, like I said. Ah, perfect charge is also very uh, interesting, but in the Leopard's case, I'm not sure I want to bother. It already has like very fast ammo. Close combat. I will go with close combat. It's situational, but you're not going to be sniping all the time, so I will go with that. Next. 
the ammo tuning I think might give too little, like these two might give too little for this tank. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with safe storage. And again, it's a paper tank, so you're not really gonna want to take like too much module damage. You don't not gonna want to get blown up. And the last question is: Do we take intuition or ammo tuning or camo? And I think out of all of these, I think camo is gonna be the one that gives like the most out of all these crew skills. This is too little. This is. Very situational. I mean, camo is going to be situational too, but this is more situational, especially since the leopard reloads pretty fast. I'm going to go with camo out of all of these. And that will be like the crew skills on our leopard. <clears throat> okay. That was the leopard. Let's pick a medium tank that can actually brawl like an E50M, right? There we go. I'll repeat, if you don't have a full 6 kill crew on your tank, do not start with Bia, like I'm about to do. Leave it for last. <clears throat> because it's only like, it's gonna be like 5% and all the crew members need to have it, right? So like, you have a lot more useful stuff to put before that. Okay, Bia repairs, we don't care about camo on the E50, you know? It doesn't really have that great camo to begin with, and it's not really a sniper tank. It's more of a brawler type recon. We want the V range. Emergency, you're going to be taking damage to this all the time since we're brawling, right? <clears throat> Aiming speed after you spot a vehicle. This tank also has very good uh, gun handling. Not going to be that useful on it. Sound detection. But this we don't need. Mental, we don't need. Practically, we don't need. So I guess I'm going to go with sound detection. I'm going to put this like first, since my last crew skill is not 100%. Because I want the negative effects of stunning. And coordination, right? Doesn't need that much aim time. The gun already like aims pretty fast, so... <clears throat> Alright. Let's move on to the gunner. Bia repairs, snapshot. These are like must-haves all the time. And basically on tanks that have a turret. If your tank doesn't have a turret, you don't want to put snapshot. Alright. Armorer. I'm gonna go with armorer. Gun dispersion and like less uh, RNG range. Aiming speed and traverse. Not that useful on this tank. We're gonna go with this one, I guess, when we're gonna be sniping, right? When we're gonna be stationary. Camo, we don't care. Designated target, we don't care. Deadeye, we don't care. I don't really care about aiming speed and true traverse speed that much either, so maybe we'll put just one into camo. Right? Maybe we'll put just one, and that's it. Not useful, but these ones like don't really benefit the E50 too much. It's just too little benefit. E50 already has like a super good gun, so... Let's go with this bad boy. With one camo. If he was a 430U instead of camo, I would have picked the thing with aim time, right? Probably. Just so we can make a little comparison. Okay. Bia repairs on the driver. Uh, smooth ride. Must have. Like, smooth ride is, is good on any tank. It doesn't matter if you have a turret or not. This is good on any tank. Okay. Obviously, it's E50M. That's why I picked the E50M and I didn't pick a 430U. Because we're going to go with controlled impact. This thing is a hell of a rammer. And I would definitely recommend putting controlled impact on your E50. Right? Because you're gonna do some crazy rams with this bad boy. It has like a good frontal armor and it's very fast too, so definitely recommend controlled impact on your tank. It's gonna be situational, but think of it like this. You're yoloing a target, you're gonna be doing 60 kilometers an hour, you ram it, you do like let's say 500 damage, you're not gonna take that much in return. Unless you ram a mouse, which would be a bad idea, right? <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So I'll control the impact, right? Uh, okay, what's next? HE shell damage. We're probably going to take this. Engineer is only 
don't care that much. We're probably gonna take this, you know, to help us with some RD with some RD damage. Right? We're gonna take this and after driving more benefit on bad terrain. Okay, the one kilometer is just too little increase, so I'm not gonna bother. Okay, radio operator. <clears throat> Okay, Bia repairs situation awareness again. We need the V range, especially since I'm not gonna, <clears throat> I'm not running optics or whatever on this tank. Side by side, yes, it's situational, but most of the times you'll be next to another medium, right? Okay, we got four camo, we don't care, at least not now. <clears throat> we don't care about this. Probably gonna go with the firefighting. I'm gonna go with the firefighting just in case, even though like I don't remember burning with my E50 ever. Right? But I'll go with the firefighting and maybe we'll put one more in camo. Don't care about jamming either. Yeah, it's just not really useful for this tank. I'll go with one more into camo, just in case we'll find ourselves in a situation where we might need to. You know, be a bit more cheeky, a bit more... Yeah, but even then, like all the camo we added, the, the, it doesn't really add too much, so... Okay, loader. Bia repairs, <clears throat> must have adrenaline rush. Let's take a look at these bad boys. Intuition could be useful because E50 has very good penetration. And you don't find yourself often shooting gold ammo, so I'm gonna go with intuition on this one. Uh, I'm probably gonna skip safe storage. I don't really remember my A50M getting ammo racked. I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna take close combat because, again, this is a tank in which you're definitely gonna be doing some close quarter combat. We don't need camo, we don't need the shell velocity, ammo tuning might be too little. Okay, so I guess we're gonna go with the safe storage in the end too. Just for added durability, right? Just because these other ones don't give that much to us. Okay, that was an E50. We're done with medium tanks. Let's go ahead and spec a tank destroyer, shall we? Let's start with a Grill 15. I'm gonna go with the Sniper TD first. And after that, I'm gonna go with a brawler td right okay commander i'll say it again if you don't have six crew skills do not start with bia leave it for the end because it needs to be on all your tanks bia repairs recon we're gonna be sniping with this bad boy so we definitely want to have like some camo even if the grill doesn't have that great camo by default we're gonna stack it and get it a little bit higher right Okay, we will take damage eventually, right? And we'll get a little bonus for the crew efficiency. Don't care too much about sand detection, because most of the times we'll try to be a bit more sneaky with it. So we're probably going to take aiming speed. Uh, possibly aiming speed might be a bit more useful than this. So let's like take this first and then crew efficiency, because... Grill 15 does take a little time to aim, right? It blooms a lot when you drive with it, so it does take a little bit of time to aim. This will be a nice bonus whenever you want to go ahead and do your own thing and spot a target. Or just whenever somebody peeks behind a corner, you know? He peeks, you get a boost at the aim time, you can like shoot him faster, you, you get the point. Okay, so these are the commander skills. <clears throat> Going over to the gunner. Bia repairs camel. Uh, we're gonna take snapshot because grill does have a semi-working turret, right? It's not a fully rotating turret, but it does have a turret, so yeah, we're gonna take it. We're gonna uh, further take armorer, so uh, it uh, reduces the dispersion further. Even though, since it's a sniper tank, 
I'm probably gonna want to take this first so I can have like the added accuracy right that would be more important and we'll take this gun dispersion uh because like this my my last crew wasn't uh, actually I don't know if it's fully trained I think it is fully trained never mind we'll take those two okay I had the impression that it's not fully trained okay going over to driver BR repairs uh let's take camo too we'll take smooth ride obviously we're gonna take the reliable placement because everybody shoots high explosive at a grill clutch braking could be a um skill you might want to consider but then again the the grill 15 traverse speed is not that horrible right like even before like i would probably skip clutch braking on all my tanks still i don't feel like clutch braking has that much value so i'd rather go with afro driving on this bad boy just so we have like less penalty on bad terrain radio operator BR repairs camo situational for the added v range side by side <clears throat> Well, it's going to be situational for this tank since you're going to be sniping uh, most of the time. So basically this will activate when you're less than 50 meters from... Uh, I mean, I guess you will be like close to another TD a lot of the times, right? It is situational, but we will take it. We took camo, jamming, we're probably gonna go jamming because, yeah, it will be useful to be like spotted one second less, especially on a tank that has no survivability like the grill. Going over to the loader crew skills that we will duplicate. Repairs, camo. Even though on this one is like more useful skills, so I'm gonna stay out from camo right now. Right, I'm gonna keep out of the camouflage for now. Uh, let's go with Adrenaline Rush. <laughs> Minimum potential damage and penetration. We're gonna skip this for now too, because it doesn't offer that much benefit. This, I would definitely take this for the grill. A lot of, com uh, like, a common complaint I hear from people is they always miss with their grill 15. Right? The shell velocity of the grill 15 is not the best, right? Like, the Shell velocity is decent, but not the best. So I would definitely recommend taking this. Because the faster your shell is, the more accurate you will be shooting moving targets mainly, right? But also like stationary targets, because the shell will like travel faster. It's not going to tend to go up and down. So I would take perfect charge for the grill. <clears throat> We got four for now, like I said, we're skipping camo for now. Uh, I'm gonna take close combat, situational, but you will find yourself in the position to have to push eventually, right? So I will take close combat. And the last, we gotta pick between all these. This is too low benefit, this is also gonna be kind of a low benefit. I'm probably gonna go with intuition on this tank. Because um, <clears throat> I will have to like change shell types, you know. So I'm going to go with intuition. I think I'll have like the most benefit from them. My crew skills aren't fully trained on this, but it doesn't matter. I would go with intuition because I'll get the most benefit out of this. <laughs> okay, uh, here we're just going to duplicate repairs, adrenaline rush, perfect charge, close combat and intuition. We just duplicate what we have, basically. <clears throat> okay, that was the grill 15. That was a tank destroyer with no armor. Now we're gonna go ahead and spec a tank destroyer with armor. Let's pick one of my favorites, the T110E3. Unless I don't have full screw skills. Okay, I don't have full screw skills on this. Let's take a badger maybe. I wanna like be able to like put everything right, something. Okay, so I can show you guys exactly what to spec. So we're gonna take the badger instead. Because I have all the crew skills. I repeat, if you don't have six crew skills, leave BF for last. Because it's not that useful since you have to have it on all your crew members. 
Okay, BA repairs must have on a tank like this. Recon, yes. We're not going to care too much about camo with this tank. Like I said, it's going to be a close quarter combat tank. So we're going to leave camouflage and stuff like that for last. We will be taking damage all the time. So crew efficiency after taking damage. Yes. Uh, aiming speed after you spot a vehicle. <laughs> not going to have that much effect on this one since it's kind of slow, but we probably take it. We're probably going to take it because these the other ones aren't that useful, right? And we're probably going to go with sound detection just to have less negative stun effect, you know? The alert when Artie's about to shoot you. Don't know if it's going to matter too much with this. It's a slow tank. Don't know how much we're going to be able to, like, dodge the Artie shields, right? But we don't need camo, at least not right now, or these other ones. <clears throat> okay. Bia on the gunner. Bia repairs. This tank doesn't have a turret, you know? So whenever you take snapshot on a tank without a turret, it only helps you when you move your gun left and right within the gun within the gun arc. So this is not something you want to prioritize well on a turretless tank. Sneeze. Thank you, Cyberpunk. This is not something you want to prioritize if your tank doesn't want doesn't have a turret. So we're gonna leave this for now. <clears throat> Instead, we're going to go with Armorer, right? Less RNG and, like, gun dispersion. Aiming speed and turret reverse. This will be useful. Sort of. Don't have a turret. It will be, like, useful. Maybe compared to these ones. Aiming speed and turret reverse. We don't have a turret aiming speed. The Badger does take a little bit of time to aim. It's not the fastest to aim. Let's leave it for now. Fully trained dispersion. We're going to take this one in case we're going to find ourselves like sniping, right? Yeah. Okay, so we got snapshot, aiming speed. We need like two more. In this case, since we're not really going to benefit f too much from all these other skills, we're probably going to go with one camel. We're finally going <clears> to... <throat> We're going to go with one camo. And I'm probably going to take snapshot. Like I said, it's only going to work when you move your gun left and right within the, the gun arc. So it's going to have like reduced effect. But we don't have a turret and aiming speed. Yeah, this will probably be like more useful overall. <clears throat> so let's go with that. Driver. BR repairs. Smooth right. This works. It doesn't matter if you have a turret or not. You know, basically when you're just driving. Smooth right where it will take. Clutch braking could be something to consider on this tank. Um, controlled impact. To be honest, I don't think anybody's going to want to ram a badger and you're too slow to ram anybody. So, Also, like this could be somewhat useful for the one kilometer extra speed. I'm basically just trying to pick like the, the best of all of this. Let's take off our driving for now. Uh, we're gonna take this will be useful against RD damage right what's more useful less RD damage or one kilometer top speed I'm gonna pick like the the I'm gonna make the best compromise I'm not gonna take clutch braking even though it's a skill you can consider I'm not gonna take it because it's not that slow to like turn so I'm gonna go with this less HE damage I'm going to go with the Engineer 2 for that one kilometer extra boost. You could easily, if you want, switch Engineer over the Clutch Braking. But for me personally, I think this might help me more overall, right? <clears throat> okay, Radio Operator. BI Repairs. Situational. Uh, okay, side by side, yes. We're going to be next to other TDs a lot of the times. Not a lot of the times, but it's going to happen. Uh, we're probably going to go with one more camo here because we don't really have anything else useful. We don't care about being spotted so much with this. I'm going to go with one firefighting. 
or I would go with one firefighting if I would have the extra skill, which I don't, okay? So I would probably take firefighting here if I would have the extra skill. It's not really gonna matter if he gets spotted for like one second less with this thing, not really. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna put this on e to guess. I'm just trying to like focus on this so, you know, it's a bit more professional. <laughs> Loader skills that we're going to duplicate. BIA repairs, adrenaline rush. Imagine how Badger's going to like shoot when you're under 25% and like all this stuff like activates. <laughs> adrenaline rush. Well, some of the stuff doesn't stack, but you know, all the time you'll be getting some boost one way or another. Adrenaline rush. Okay, close combat. Yes. This is good for the tank. Perfect charge, we don't care. We're gonna shoot like up close and personal uh, with this tank. Safe storage, I don't remember this tank getting ammo rack. Didn't, was never really an issue. Ammo tuning, minimum potential damage, could be like too little benefit. So I'm probably gonna go with one intuition here because I will need the added. Um, faster switch between ammo, right? This tank does have good penetration by default, but in case you need to shoot a cooldown tank, switch to APCR with a high explosive. And we're gonna put one camo again. It's not really a sniper tank, but it's probably gonna be more useful than the rest of the crew skills on this tank. So, let's replicate BIA repairs and adrenaline, close combat, <clears throat> intuition and camo. And that is the finished badger. <clears throat> okay, we went over heavies, medium tanks, TDs. Let's pick light tanks, right? And I'm gonna spec them again in two ways. I'm gonna pick a light tank that um, you might wanna focus on spotting versus a light tank you might want to focus on damage and the one that focuses on damage i'm going to pick the 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 new light tank line actually okay so let's pick a tier 10 light tank that we will focus on spotting a lot right let's pick the manticore probably a good example now since the manticore is going to be like nicely buffed with the crew changes, right? It's not gonna suffer from having like low crew members anymore. Even though I don't have full crew skills on the Manti. Okay, let's pick another one. I do wanna have like full crew skills so we can spec nicely. Okay, let's pick a light tank instead. Okay, so my light tank, I'm gonna make it uh, focusing on spotting, okay? You can also brawl with this tank or whatever, do damage, but I'm gonna make this one to focus on spotting for you guys, okay? Again, don't put Bia if you don't have a fully um, <clears throat> a full six skill crew. We're gonna put Bia, I'm gonna put Camo, I think I'm gonna leave repairs for last on this one. Recon, of course. Uh... I'm gonna take this. We will be taking damage with our light tank too at some point. Okay. Aiming speed after you spot a vehicle. It doesn't really matter too much on this LT because this tank has like super good dispersion on the move, right? So this will be very like little benefit to this particular tank. Let's go with sound detection. We want to know when Art is going to shoot and like less effects and stun. I will take repairs now and I'll take this one as last. Again, not very useful for this particular tank since it aims super fast. Okay. Let's go on the bonus perks. Situational, of course, because we want extra V range. <clears throat> and this is going to be more interested, interesting because it's light tanks, right? Increased crew efficiency, 
of less than 50 meters from an allied vehicle. I think this is going to happen in very, very, very small cases that you're going to be next to a other light tank. Like how often are you going to be in the same position with another light tank? It's not really going to happen. So I definitely wouldn't uh, focus on the skill. Definitely not. I will take jamming, obviously, because you want to be spotted one second less, right? I'm definitely going to take this. Uh, okay. Communication expert increases crew efficiency by the amount, if the amount of damage you exceed exceeds your hit points. It's going to be situational, but why not? You will, like I said, we are focusing on spotting on this particular tank, so I'm going to take communication expert. Another crew skill you might want to look at is this. It's going to tell you if you're spotted 0.75 seconds faster, right? Which could, in turn, increase your survivability with a light tank, right? I would say this for a light tank is just as useful as jamming, right? So it's up to you. You want to be spotted one second less or you want to know one second faster if you're spotted. If you do a lot of passive spotting, you probably want to focus on this. Because like one second matters a lot when you're spotted, you could be dead in a light tank. If you do a lot of active spotting like I do, you want to take this so you can be spotted one second less. Okay, so active spotting, jamming, passive spotting, signal interception. Okay, let's move on. Mm -mm. Major qualifications, Gunner, Bia, Camel, I'll take Snapshot even though this tank has like, has like super good dispersion on the move. Okay, so we're going to take Armorer, I'm going to take uh, Repairs, and I think last one I'll put Concentration, you know have like 3.5% better accuracy when stationary. Not gonna be super important for this, but the, this LT does have like kind of bad accuracy to begin with, so we'll put this as the as last. I prioritize repairs over it. Bonus perks, loader perks, okay. Obviously adrenaline rush, must have. Uh, okay, we don't care about this. Gun load time at less than 50 meters. If you want to brawl with a light tank, I would take it. But like I said, we're focusing on spotting on this build, right? This is a spotting build. So we're not going to take this now. I will take safe stowage because this tank does tend to get ammo rocked a lot. We don't really care about perfect charge, even though, even though this tank has very bad shell velocity, right? But you're, we're not focusing on doing damage, like I said, like, if I was focusing on doing damage, I would probably take this to help me with, like, shooting a bit. But we're not focusing on doing damage on this build. So I'm going to go with Intuition instead, so I can, like, switch in between shells as I please, right? <clears throat> okay, last one, Driver. Be a Camel. <clears throat> Smooth Ride. With the LT, you can basically just drive on the move and shoot, you know? Because it has that nice uh, dispersion. Uh, I will take this reliable placement. The LT doesn't really get pinned by high explosive that often, but it's still good to have, and you know, against RD damage. Off-road driving, of course. And the last one, uh, this is only one kilometer. We don't care about it too much. We don't care about ramming, clutch brake. We're going to take repairs. I would say that's like the better thing overall, right? You'd see I didn't focus on repairs that much because like we're focusing on spotting more, but I still put repairs because I don't want to be, you know, <clears throat> get caught, detracted when I don't have a repair kit left. Okay, so this was a light tank that we focused on spotting. I'm going to pick one of the new light tanks right now, one of the check light tanks. Mine is already spec, but I'm going to take all the crew skills off to show you. And on this particular one, we're fully focusing on uh, damage, okay? We're fully focusing on damage on this one. So I'll show you a spec for damage for light tanks. Okay. 
let's start. Bia, of course, if you don't have six crew skills, don't start with Bia, leave it for last. I'll repeat it every time. Bia, we're gonna put repairs. We're gonna put camouflage, because even if we do brawl in this tank, I still wanna be sneaky. Or even, even if we do focus on damage, I still wanna be sneaky in case I wanna spot. Recon for the V-range. Crew efficiency after taking damage. Yes. And fully trained aiming speed after uh, you spot a vehicle. Yes. Okay, we don't really care so much about sound detection. Or these other ones, okay? This is good for now. Bonus perks. Situation awareness for the extra V range, of course. Uh, this is going to be more interesting. Increases the crew efficiency of less than 50 meters from an allied vehicle of the same type. I don't know how often you're going to be next to a light tank, you know, clipping or yoloing another tank. <laughs> I'm not sure how often that's going to happen, right? So I think I will rather pick communication expert. These light tanks have very little uh, HP. This one has 1.2k. So if you spot 1.2k, you already get like a boost, boost to the crew, right? So even if we don't focus on spotting, this one is way too situational for a light tank. Okay, for any other tank, you'll be us useful. But for a light tank, like, it's never gonna happen. And last but not least, probably gonna take jamming so we can be spotted one second less. Why not? Okay, let's move along. Gunner skills. Bia repairs camo snapshot. We want to like keep the dispersion as good as possible on these new light tanks and the accuracy. Even though they already have like very good dispersion on the move, but you know it's gonna help you when you clip targets. Okay, snapshot. Uh, and we have to pick aiming speed. We don't care about it that much, right? I will take the gun dispersion again because I like to clip targets and I want the crosser to remain fairly small. And uh, we're gonna pick this. The better the accuracy on these new light tanks, the more you're gonna like hit with the with the clip, right? This is what I would recommend anyways, like have as good accuracy as possible on these tanks. They have very good dispersion on the move. If you also stack accuracy, you're gonna be able to like hit as much as possible with your auto cannons, right? So we take concentration. Uh okay. I just wanted to see if I want to like pick something else instead. Maybe I'll take like repairs off and put armor first and put repairs last so I can have like better boost there, okay? Bonus perks. Adrenaline Rush, the must-have. Close combat. A lot of the times, like I said, we're, we're doing a damage-dealing build. A lot of the times, especially with these new light tanks, you're going to be yoloing other tanks and clip at them. So, I would definitely put close combat because it's going to happen very often, right? It will. I'm not sure you're going to care too much about the shell velocity with these tanks. You want to spend the less time being far away from the targets, you know? Because the closer you are, the more you can clip. Didn't really notice these tanks, they burn too much. I'm gonna ditch safe storage. I'm gonna ditch safe storage because... Um, I didn't get Amorakt. I don't think it's gonna matter. I'm gonna ditch Intuition too. Because I just like pick my... my uh, they're auto loaders, so I just like pick my clip and wait, right? It's not really going to matter too much. But what I will pick on these tanks is ammo tuning. And I think this is going to be a lot more important than, than like a lot of other stuff on this tank. Because you're going to be shooting a lot, right? Like a lot of shells, bullets, whatever. So increasing the minimum potential damage and penetration is definitely going to be something. It's not a lot, but considering you shoot like... I don't know, this tank has what? How many shells? Like 75, I think. The previous one had like 140. You're going to be shooting a lot, so... 
this low key might increase your DPG potentially, right? So we're gonna take this. Okay, driver skills, Bia, repairs camo, some smooth ride. <clears throat> Don't care about clutch braking. Uh, reliable placement, HE shell damage, yes. We want that to take less HE damage. We don't care about controlled impact. We don't care about clutch braking. Engineer is only one kilometer. We don't care about too much. So we're going to go with off-road driving. Not necessarily last. Like, yeah, I could take like repairs, for example, and put off-road driving first and this after that. Yeah, because like the repairs will be fast anyway. So, <clears throat> okay. There we go. We spec'd a DPG, a damage build for a light tank. So we went through heavy tanks, mediums, TDs, lights. What do we have last? Artillery. <laughs> and artillery, I guess it's only going to be one type, you know? Not sure it's going to matter too much. So last, but definitely the least. <coughs> I kid, I kid. We're gonna spec an Artie. Let's go with the M53. Actually, I'm not sure if I have uh, all the crew skills on my Artie. Oh, this one, the Conqueror GC has the most. Let's go with the Conqueror GC. Now we're talking, right? Now we're talking. Since I don't have all the crew skills on my Artie, I'm just gonna tell you in theory the last crew skills, right? So, on artillery, I guess. Even if you start with a uh, fresh crew, you can still put Bia at the start with Artie if you want to train it later, because it's not really going to matter. Like, Artie's going to do damage either way. But if you want to, like, be full try hard, I guess you want to leave Bia for later. But no. I will put it at the start. Bia. We don't care about repairs, don't care about camo. Increases the crew efficiency after taking damage. Well, this is going to be very situational only when, let's say, also you're probably not going to need so many crew skills on Artie anyways, right? <clears throat> this is not going to be that useful unless some enemy Artie like traces you. <clears throat> what is useful though, will be sound detection, right? You're definitely going to want to know when not the Artie is going to shoot you. Also, something that we haven't used on other tanks, we're going to take practicality on this one, right? It's possible Artie will shoot you, will stun you, somebody will yell at you, you're going to need, like, to use your kit. So we're going to take practicality on this one. Something that we didn't take on the others, right? And basically, we don't care about repairs. If somebody shoots you, you're most likely dead. Anyways. You don't really need camo because you're like in the back of the map anyway, so whatever. We're just gonna pick like... I don't know. When you take damage... This is not gonna be so useful because let's say you take damage twice maximum, right? And you are dead, so not really. We're gonna go with camo just because we don't really have anything better to put, right? So luckily for RD players, you don't really need so many crew skills to be effective in Artie, right? Like, it doesn't even matter if you put the last ones. Irrelevant. Okay. Situation where we don't care. <clears throat> uh, what we do care about Artie, crew efficiency being... Okay, this is going to be useful because a lot of the times you're matched up with, like, other Arties. So this is going to be useful, right? It's going to be in your best interest to stay close. To other arties right now. <laughs> okay. And uh, secondly, I'm gonna go with signal interception. I think for Artie in particular is gonna be more important because like you're gonna know you're spotted 0 0.75 seconds faster. So you can move faster. If you don't move, Artie can trace you, somebody can shoot you. So I think it's more important that you know faster when you're spotted. right then like being spotted one second extra if you get more crew skills which i don't have on this rd i would put jamming too of course you'll be spotted one second less but i would prioritize this over jamming 
because it will keep you alive, right? It's better to know in, in Artie's case that you're spotted faster so you can run away. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Uh, what do we have next? Gunner. Bia. We're gonna take snapshot because, you know, we have like a... <laughs> somewhat of a turret, I guess. Well, do we have a turret on this? Let's cancel. Oh, not really, we don't have a turret. For some reason I thought this one has a turret. The M53 has a turret, right? Yeah, let's leave this one for later. <clears throat> Let's leave snapshot for later because we don't have a turret. Um, decreases the gun dispersion stationary. This is going to be obviously a no-brainer for Artie. You're going to be stationary all the time, so you want to have better accuracy. <clears throat> right? This is a no-brainer. Increases aiming speed and turret reverse speed. We don't have a turret, but I still might take it just for the aiming speed. It is Artie. So let's take it. Decreases the potential RNG. I'm going to take it. And lastly, I'm going to take Snapshot. Because we don't have a turret on this RD. If it was the M53 RD, I would probably like take this first. But it's not. So I'll take Snapshot last. Okay, basically just benefit from all the gun handling skills. Don't care about Deadeye, not really. Like I said, like... Module damage seems to be completely RNG in this game, so I definitely wouldn't focus on a true skill like that. Even if you were to like do module damage uh, missions, I really don't know if this would help you too much, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to Gunner. Well, there's two Gunners, right? Ah, two gunner press. Do I need to take both? I haven't been in this situation yet to like have two gunners. <laughs> uh wait, let's see. Concentration. I'm guessing I need to take them both. Where's the snapshot? Uh Zero sixty six. I'm guessing we're gonna pick them both. I haven't been in a situation yet where like a tank has two gunners. So we're just gonna like duplicate the crew skills, concentration, armorer, quick aiming, and snapshot. Right? haven't been in the situation yet so I'm assuming we got to duplicate them just like the um loader skills okay next we got a driver <clears throat> be a uh, smooth right this is not really gonna be very useful on Artie because you're not really gonna shoot on the move right let's be honest what will be useful on this tank is probably going to be clutch braking, so you can turn a bit faster. Off-road driving too, but let's see if you can put something else more useful first. So we don't need smooth, I don't need these right now. It increases shell damage absorption. We're probably going to go with shell damage absorption. For whenever like an other RD player is tracing you, you'll take like 10% less damage, we'll go with that. Okay, well, we could actually put two entire crew skills, right? Okay. I'm gonna pick these two, obviously. I just don't know in what order I wanna put them. Uh, okay, well, off road driving is gonna help us, like, when we, you know, turn left, right, too, I guess, sorta. So I'm gonna go with off road driving and I'll take engineer last. There we go. And most of the skills, it's mentioned that duplication has no effect, yeah? Well, on these ones it doesn't. Unless it's like shows in there. I 
Ah, no, it does. Look, if two gunners have the perk, the average value of training is applied. So it does. The, if two gunners have the perk, the average values is applied. There we go. Yeah, so it, it, you need to duplicate them just like on the, the loaders. Yeah. You got to duplicate them. It says the effect is averaged. What does that mean, Einstein? It means you add the two values and you split by two. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, on the snapshot, though, we can like probably like not keep it because this one doesn't say anything, right? No, it does. The average value is applied. Yeah. Okay, so you need to duplicate on the on the loaders too. <clears throat> okay, let's go over to the loaders. Bia, adrenaline rush. I'm not sure how often this is gonna happen. I'm not sure how often this is gonna happen that your uh, RD is gonna be under 25% HP. Let's leave it for now. This is definitely not gonna matter. Perfect charge. I think this is gonna be like a perfect skill for Arty, right? <laughs> this is gonna be a perfect skill for Arty. Increasing the shell velocity, which means your shells will reach a little bit faster, right? So definitely need that one. Intuition, also a must-have on Arty. You're probably gonna be switching a lot between ammo types, right? Well, mostly you're gonna be shooting stun shells, but every once in a while. Okay, next, I'm gonna put ammo tuning. It's not gonna be much, but it increases the minimum potential, you know, pen and damage, so I will take it. And probably last, I'll be taking concealment. I really don't think, like, how often are you gonna be at under 25%? Like, what is this, 480? 500? I don't know if I should bother, but then again, I don't care about camouflage either, so let's maybe put it... What's more likely to happen? You being spotted? This little camouflage, like, actually having any effect on your big-ass arty, or you being lower HP, so the adrenaline rush activates. Ah, let's go with adrenaline rush. I'll do it. I'll pick it last, though, because it's not that important. Right? And now let's just, like, duplicate the skills. Be uh, uh, perfect charge, ammo tuning, intuition, and adrenaline rush. It's not really gonna like happen that often. Yeah, I suppose that's a good point. You can like damage yourself and try to bring yourself to like low HP. It's a valid point, I guess. Right? Okay, so that was the last one. That was artillery. I basically specced all of them. Heavies, mediums, TDs, lights, and arty, right? It's very simple to, to, to spec, you know? If you just, like, spend two seconds and actually read what the crew skills do and use common sense a little bit, it's very simple to, to, to like, spec your tanks, right? Okay, hope you guys enjoyed the, the little crew skills guide. I hope it's gonna help you. Cheeky bricky. Sanatati no mabini. All righty. Let me take a little break right now because I've been needing to pee for quite some time and I gotta drink some water because my throat is parched from like speaking constantly. I think.